Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where my partner and I are going to go talk about a vintage thing. A vintage, a vintage yeah. film channel special. Yeah. A musical special. Wait, musical Roy special? And Dale. Wait, musical special? Yeah, this is where you and I get to do a duet. Let's let's do that. Okay, let's Happy, see, you ready? Two, yeah. three, four. Happy, Happy trails, trails to you, you, you until, until we, we meet, meet again. again. Happy trails. You like to, the way I filled in with the to dum, to dum, to dum. Well, yeah. you didn't do the clip clop. You know what was the clip clop? Well, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, clip clop, clip clop. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's as bad as some of these old cowboy shows. Right. <laughs> so what we did this week is we found an old Roy Rogers episode, it's TV show, yeah, on Vintage Film Channel. And we watched it and uh I just got the greatest kick out of it. It is the shows were so simple. Of course, all the shows back this is 1950 something or other. Do you know the date, Art? Uh 50 this was probably, they were from 51 to 57, so it's the early 50s for sure. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's there's Dale and um, it, and Pat. Pat, but, Pat so, no, it wasn't Butcher, it was Pat Brady. I made the same mistake. Pat Brady, pardon me. Right. Uh, the, the comic relief. Right. Anyway, I, I love this show. I forgot how simple it really is. You know, it's not much to it. Right. But I love this show because... It had this fantastic mix of modern, modern day uh, conveniences. Pat, Pat uh, Brady drove a jeep called right? Nelly, 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 Nelly Bell. Jeep. Nelly Bell it was the name of the jeep. Nelly Bell, and yeah. and and they used telephones, and it, it was, so it was a modern day show. And yet they're all wearing cowboy clothes and wearing pistols on their hips, and uh, there's never a sign of another jeep or another car. Other than than Nelly Bell ever, right? So, I, I always found it convenient for the producers, <laughs> but odd storylines when this is supposed to be like the old West, but it's not. Well, I t I tell you, the thing that was most interesting to me, and as you know, that one of the things I get a kick out of is when I watch any of these vintage film channel movies and shows or TV shows, is I like to do some research about stuff that. I didn't even know, but like, like for instance, I thought it was Pat right. Buttram originally, and I looked at Pat Buttram and it wasn't him, so I went to the cast of, and it was Pat Brady, who has an interesting backstory. Uh, uh, he was a sidekick. Uh, yeah. Uh, like uh, Gene Autry had sidekicks and sure. and, and uh, all, all those guys did. But I, I didn't re recall how religious this was. This made Davy and Goliath Looked like Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, yes. The the uh, uh, and uh, uh, to their credit, they they were very committed uh, Christians. Uh, yeah. they, they actually helped found a, a, a church that still exists today in the LA uh, area, uh, and uh, so they were very committed to these stories. Um, uh, Happy Trails that we were singing, by the way, was actually written by Dale Evans. I never yes. knew that. She wrote it. And yes. uh, it became their theme song. And that was his third marriage and yeah. her second or third marriage. But they yeah. were just this wonderful, this was the early 50s TV. The, there was a moral to it. And it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't hidden at all. It wasn't like yeah. uh, the rifleman that's sort of like, well, the moral of the Old West. This was yeah. straight out of Bible school. Uh, oh, well, not quite that bad. It wasn't, I didn't consider it quite proselytizing, but they did sing the little girl in this particular episode, the little girl's father is missing or something like that. Right. And they, 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 uh, she brings out a guitar. She says, can we sing a song? Mm. And they sing, uh, the Bible told me so. How do I know the Bible told me so? A classic old, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if you can call it a religious song, but it's certainly a, a, a Christian uh, staple. Well, and sure, then it, it certainly it. wasn't in the realm of hip hop. Uh, right. That. <laughs> right. And then they sing it again later. I was kind of surprised to find that they didn't sing um, Happy Trails until the closing credits. Right. 
Uh, I thought the show, op- oh, I just remembered Happy Trails so much. I, I thought the show opened with Happy Trails, but it really didn't. It was just a, their closing theme song. Uh, and by the but, way, not all, it, was on, it was on TV for about six years. I think they had about 100 episodes, but it was also on radio for yes. uh, uh, yeah. maybe uh, 10 years or something like that. Yeah. So, well, he had, if, if I could be mistaken, but if I'm not, uh, I believe that Roy Rogers sang with the Sons of the Pioneers. Yeah, he was, he, he was in a, uh, that's how he sort of got his, uh, got away from his roots of, I think they were in the, the Midwest someplace and they moved in and out to California to stay with a, a relative yeah. for a while. Then eventually he went out there and then yeah, he got changed a, his name from right. Leonard Sly or something yeah. like that. Great name. I don't. You wouldn't change that today. What a great name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he'd be a hip hopper with cornrows, but uh, that's well, another story. I, I but, don't think Leonard Sly would never have become a hip hopper. I don't think that was <laughs> that wasn't his thing. But but, uh, but you're right about the religious. Uh, first of all, people, if you weren't, if you didn't live in Southern California. Mm. Um, through the 70s and 80s, I think they died in the 90s. But you would not, you would probably not be aware of the fact that Roy and Dale, after the show went off, opened a museum. They had the Roy Rogers Museum in Apple mm. Valley, which is kind of desert north of right. um, uh, L.A. I I went there at least once, and you know they they was famous because they had stuffed Trigger, his famous right. horse. And they stuffed bullet. They had, bullet. But they had the jeep there. They had all their collection of guns. Uh, Dale had her stuff, and uh, uh, they're very proud of their son, uh, Dusty. Um, and I think they might have had a daughter too. At any rate, this museum was a real tribute to them. And finally, after they died, and the son couldn't keep it up anymore, they sold it to somebody. I don't know where it is now. If it, they moved it to Florida, or or they just put it in storage. But that museum kept Roy and Dale living for decades after the TV show went off. Oh, let me give you another uh, fact, which uh, I, I never knew at the time, and probably most people didn't, but because I was able to do the research, uh, principally through Dale, but both she and Roy, uh, I think that uh, it was a second, of, it was certainly his third marriage, and he had some older uh, kids from previous marriages. And I don't know about her, but they had, I believe they had a Down syndrome a daughter who died early on. And Dale Evans uh, had, had started uh, nonprofits and organizations and was a huge advocate for Down syndrome children and integrating them into society and providing opportunities yeah. for them rather than treating them as the outcasts as they had been uh, up to that yeah. point as, you know, just... Yeah. We don't want to see him put him off to the side. So yeah. she dedicated 20, 30 years of her life to to this. As, and they were both involved in these kind of things. So they were really, really nice people. Yes. Uh, and, yeah. uh, but, it, it, but getting back to one of the early premises we were talking about, I had forgotten of how many shows had such an uh, uh, overt um, a moral uh, message yeah. to it. And I, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about even like things that are more violent, like The Rifleman and other shows like that, always had something that was really there. But this sort of reminded me a little bit of like a uh, live action Davy and Goliath, <laughs> because it really, <laughs> it really was over the top. But you know what? It's great story. And one last thing, Nellie Bell, the Jeep, not yeah. in this episode, but I always remember the Jeep sometimes went off on its own. Oh, and, really? Yeah, it went off on its own without uh, Pat Brady in it and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and did things, you know, like a corral, uh, uh, a bad guy or something like that. But there's, yeah. no, there's no question that by the end of every one of these shows, the bad guy, mostly by guys, okay, was caught that the guy who was oh. being poorly, uh, uh, unjustly accused is exonerated yeah. and yeah. everything is happy at the end. Yeah. And the little girl's father is found to be innocent. And, Just like a yeah. Hallmark movie, but without, you know, the, the fake kiss at the end. All done in 25 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, the the, uh, the Vintage Film Channel has uh, this one Roy Rogers episode, right. which I think is a classic example. I don't know what season it came from or what episode it was, but it's a 
classic example of the Roy Rogers TV show. And it's a classic example of the era right. of the 1950s. Right. Um, even I remember Gene Autry, uh, not not very far distant in time. Gene Autry had a thing called the Melody Ranch. Yes. And, and he had the same thing. They were all riding horses and shooting six guns. And then they'd go back to the ranch and do a radio show. <laughs> and by the way, it's very likely that uh, uh, because Dale and Roy, oh, I, actually, I think this is in, uh, season four, uh, owned a ranch. And I'm sure, we well, actually it, it talked about a, there, a lot of the stuff was done in a studio in yeah. Burbank or someplace. And the interior shots and the exterior was done on a famous, it may have been the Melody Ranch. Didn't what we have one up in uh in that neck of the woods in Apple Valley? In any event. I no, Gene Autry was closer to um San Diego. Simi Valley. Oh Simi Valley. If, if you knew the if you knew the geography of LA, yeah. uh, Gene Autry's ranch was uh northwest. This was the uh, Roy Rogers place was northeast. Right. Uh Apple Valley. But it, it's over the over the Santa Susana Mountains, if I'm not mistaken. Right. In, in the desert area, so. But there uh, aren't too many places with exteriors that still look like that, except maybe in Montana or someplace where you don't see telephone lines. There and... is there is one place, and it's a county park. It's a Los Angeles county park called Valdez Rocks. Really? And it's it's famous because every cowboy TV show, every cowboy movie shot in Valdez Rocks. It's the same place where the Lone Ranger would ride up with these big boulders behind him, Ride up and and uh, his horse would go and ride up and they, oh silver, hi oh silver, you know. Trust me, Valdez Rocks is still there. Oh, by the way, one other little interesting factoid about um, Dale Evans is she was born in Uvalde, Texas, which had wow. been in the news in the last year or two because of a a shooting there. But probably the only time other than that current thing that anybody outside of Southern Texas or Texas heard yeah. about that town is if they looked in her background to find her wiki to find out that that's where she was born just yeah well she doesn't have an accent she was no. a, i don't know that she was considered a hottie at the time but i think she was a uh, an icon for a lot of girls mm. because she she was you know granted it was the roy rogers show it wasn't roy rogers and dale evans but she wore a gun on her hip she could uh shoot and fight with the best of them she would say i'm coming with you things like that so she was a big deal right you know what if more bell comics took them over they would probably have her and annie oakley uh face yes. off for duel <laughs> <laughs> but let's get back to vintage film final so this is the kind of stuff that every week uh john and i find something yep. that uh yeah, it's hokey, whatever it is, but it, it's it's a reminder of what we remember seeing in our childhood that we liked. I remember liking the show. I don't yeah. know that I was addicted to it like I was to uh, some other uh, shows like uh, Twilight Zone and things like that. But yeah. she has such a wide variety of uh, uh, films and uh, uh, TV shows uh, that... It, that it's really, and then every so often, maybe if she only has one or two there that she was able to find and, and put up on a station, uh, every so often you and I go off and we look for other films, even other places. But yeah. there's right now, there, there, there are hundreds that we haven't even explored at the Vintage oh, Film yeah. Channel. So you spend, you spend all day on the Vintage Film Channel, right? But you know, I wanted to point out before we go the quality of this show. Grace has taken the, the, she's rescued old shows and old movies, gotten prints of them, they're in common domain, and she processes them. I, I said she restores them, and she said, no, no, can't say restores, that's a, that's a different process. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, but what she does is she highlights them and processes them. They look brand new to me. And they, she turns them into high resolution. I mean, she has that. She, she doesn't restore them from the standpoint of, of where you have all the burn holes in them and things right. like that. So she doesn't do that and she doesn't colorize them. But what she does right. do is she takes these prints and sometimes from a telecity. Yeah. And not, yeah. Not, and what, see, do they, what do they call the, the, the black and white that just uh, like the Kinescope. Kodak show? 
kinescope. Kinescope, yeah. And she just she enhances them, brightens them up, and makes them okay. uh, probably in many cases better than original. I I don't doubt because yeah. they're now digital files right. and uh, they look great. So go to Vintage Film Channel, you know, scan around, um, see what you like. You're gonna there's so much there; it's unbelievable. And watch some of this stuff. It's great. It's great old stuff. So I think uh, we should uh, probably mosey along now uh, and watch our next film for next week, John. What do you think? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, let's go out. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. We can we can sing it out, but yeah. let's uh, let's uh, first say because I use Pabna. I've been sitting on this other one. So John, I think it's time for us to saddle up. Saddle up and Ohio. Oh, Ohio Silver is a different show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we'll look for that too. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's sing it out. Good night, everybody. Hey, happy, happy trails, trails to you until, until we meet again. again. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.